Hey everybody, welcome, welcome, welcome to our live. We come to you live each and every day, every day. We come to you live Monday through Thursday, 10.30 a.m. Central Time. So it is a great opportunity for you to get to know Luminesce, what we have to offer, how to apply it, all the ins and outs. Plus, we talk about other products. Uh, you know us for airbrushing, but we also have skincare. We also have uh, color cosmetics, and so we do it all. We do it all here. Um, so we're going to get started. We're going to have some fun today. Yesterday, um, a few of you had some suggestions on what to do, which I love hearing. Um, and so we are going to get to those today. Hello, Martin. Hello, Pam. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I'm going to clean out my airbrush real quick. Um, so yeah, we always go up. We know that there are people at different levels with Luminous. And so we always like to go over the start the beginnings, the how-tos on all of that. Good morning, Cindy. Good morning, Debbie. Um, and so we like to go over start to finish, basically. Um, so everybody know, you know, everybody has an equal playing field. They know what to do when they first start out. Um, <laughs> it, it, Jeannie's like, hey, Luminessers. Um, it is a word, I believe. Um, so let's look at our starter, one of our starter kits. This is the icon. Um, we also have the Icon Pro and the Legend, um, and then, of course, the Breeze, which is the one that I'll be using. And then we do have um, the makeup that comes with it. Now, you may have gotten extra makeup because of when you purchase the system, but it's all going to come with at least two bottles of foundation, love and blush. And our blush is super high pigmented. A little bit goes a long way, and so um, we're going to talk about that. And then um, love might not be something you use every single day, but you are going to love it. It is a luminator. It's going to give your skin some luminosity. Um, so definitely try it out and see how you like it. Next, this is what we want you to do. So we want you to make sure that you keep your stylus so your breeze moving around the face while keeping it four fingers away. And then you're barely, barely, barely going to release the trigger here. There's not a lot of room from here to here. And so it really is very light that you are pulling back. Um, one way to practice is practice with water at first, because that way you it's fun. You're practicing with water and you just keep going and then you're not wasting any product. And you can just you can get those movements down, get that distance down, get the pulling back of the trigger down and then it'll all be amazing for you. Hello, Luminous. Hello, Marilyn. Uh, supposed to be done on it over there from the finish. Um, we're still working on that. Well, I'm working on that. Um, my mom is out of town, so I can't get her right now. So we are still working on that. Um, so I haven't forgotten about y'all, but we uh, we will be doing that. All right. So today we are going to do a ombre eye, and then I have the uh, magnetic lashes that we are going to also do. Um, and then we wanted to talk about color correctors. A lot of you have asked about color correctors. I'm getting some, some of the lashes out to make sure. Let's see, that one's a natural. Which ones do we want to use? Um, and so, hey, Lindy, how are you? Um, Diva. I want to try to show you the different kinds. I hope we have glam. I hope one of these is glam. Um, we do have, with the lashes, the magnetic lashes, we do have the full kit, which has all of them together, which I have somewhere. Um, oh, yay. Do I have them all? Diva. No, I don't have I don't have the glam ones. I have natural and diva, so we'll, talk, we'll look at those two um, and see the difference with those. Which one is this? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I do have a glam. Okay, so we have them all. <laughs> hey, Lynn, how are you? Um, so we are going to, to touch on all that. Now, because we are going to focus on eyes um, and use some fun eyeshadows and, and talk about the ombre eyes, I am going to do eyes first. Um, a lot of times, most of the time, I'll do eyes first when airbrushing because of the fact that I can do my eyes 
if I have any fallout here, it won't matter because I can clean it up before airbrushing. And if you are holding the stylus or the braids four finger widths away and you're doing your, hey, Zandra, and you're concentrating on where you're spraying it, it's not going to get on what you've done. Um, you know, I always have my eyebrows on before I get started. And so it doesn't get on my eyebrows. Um, but let's now go over color correctors. And so the reasons for using those. Um, we have... And I think I even had a slide for it. Um, we do. I did. I saw it. I promised. There you go. Disappeared. Oh, there it is. Okay. So this is our color correctors. We have the peach. We have green. We have yellow. And then we have the purple. The ones that I feel get the most use would be the peach and the green. Now, you may have one or some, you know, maybe major, you know, some of these issues, but you want to use the one that you have majority of the issues with, okay? So if I only see redness when I look in the mirror with no makeup on, then I'll go with the green. It's going to camouflage any redness. If I need to, if I have dark circles or sunspots, uh, age spots, any darkness, any uh, brown spots, you're going to use the peach color corrector. Now, I have both. I have green. I, I need the green and the peach. However, if I pick the peach, I'm going to use the peach for all those areas, okay? I'm not going to switch to the green. I'm just going to use the peach. Yellow is going to brighten dark circles, and it, if your skin looks dull or lifeless, you can use the yellow. Um, then also with the purple, it's going to even out the yellow undertone. So if you have some yellow in your skin in certain areas, then you can use the purple as well to kind of brighten the um, that those areas. And, and those common areas are going to be right in the center of the face. So like under eyes, nose area, like right boop, here. Okay. So that, I like showing that because that way you see what each one does. So between the two, I believe the peach and the green are going to be the most commonly used ones. But I want to show you another thing. All right. Now, being that this is green, and I'm only using about three drops, um, and I am going to take some of this off because I, I want to make sure you understand that, yes, this is green, but I don't want to see green, okay? So if you see that, that is not how we do it, okay? You don't want to see green. If you do, then you are pulling back too hard. You're concentrating too much in one area. So watch how you're spraying. Are you pulling back too hard on that trigger? So then if you needed to use the green, and it is something you'll put on first, But see how light I'm spraying where it's not going to show up as green so quickly. Okay. Make sense. All right. Now I'm going to use the peach. Now, obviously, shake it. the ombre eye is basically just a blended eye. There's, and we're going to talk about that too, because there's, there's different ways of doing it. To me, an ombre eye is just a blended eye, but we'll talk about it. All right. So this is the peach. Again, if you see peach immediately, then you're spraying too hard. What's great about the peach is any, I mean, any of these, but the, any skin tone can use it, but it is a little bit easier to apply because it is skinny, skin colorish, <laughs> skin like, where it's not going to be so, um, such a difference, like from the green. Does that make sense? Like peach kind of will blend in a little bit better. And so I can use this under my eyes. 
Good morning, Stephanie. Lynn has yellow undertones. So Lynn, you might want to try that purple, the, the, uh, ma the, not mauve, but yeah, the purpley color, lavender. Now, the reason you would use color correctors is if you need to step up in coverage. Like if you feel you still look, have those yellow undertones after applying the makeup, or, you know, it's not giving you the coverage that you want, then use the color correctors. But if the makeup itself is giving you coverage, then don't worry about it, okay? And I'm going to spray a little bit on my eyes because I do have darkness around my eyes. I don't know what this, like a divot for some reason now that I have. That was brand new. All right. So I just added a little bit of the peach color corrector and you can already tell it brightened it up. Now I did use it around here too, to help start my coverage with the red. Um, and, and I'll finish that off with when I get to the foundation, but I am going to do eyes first. Okay. So let's go in. I, th I was thinking about this on the way in as far as like what colors I should use. <clears throat> Ombre to me is, all about blending all about blending i always tell you blend 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 blend, blend. <laughs> no, you know you don't want to see those harsh edges and that's really true in uh, ombre now it can be um the peach color corrector martin um you can <clears throat> my eyes gonna start watering because i still have my allergies um you can have when doing an ombre you can have fun and do a um like do some fun colors where you can kind of change it out uh you know go from a i don't know yellow orange red or um you know you can just have fun with it too but again you're going to be blending the colors i do have an eyelash in my eye um so i was trying to think what fun colors we could use um, it could also be just doing like a light, medium, and dark color here. So you're open to, you know, different things that you can do. So let's go ahead. Let's see. Let me get that one out. Maybe this one too. Where's that one? I'm actually going to get all of my palettes out because I want to see. <laughs> I want to see what we can do. Because normally you'll see me. Oh, did I go? Okay. Normally you'll see me just go in <clears throat> with a one color and do, 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 and just do that. But with an ombre, we're going to just start blending it out. Now I'm going to put it on strong to show you where I'm putting it and then to, and then we'll start blending it. Hey, Linda, good morning. How are you? <laughs> Let's do this one. Maybe. Oh, I might have to get some of the older palettes out. What? Let's see. I kind of wanted to do like pinks. Um, where like pink to um maybe maybe we end up doing purple let's let's do a purple i guess because that i can have a little more options on the purples all right so we can and we'll do this one the glare is so strong um all right. Oh, yay. I'm so excited. I think I get that in that color. Okay. So now I'm going to open up my nude and naughty to see what colors I have in there. Okay. So let's go ahead. I'm going to do purples. I am going to start, which I haven't used this. Oh, good, Robin. I'm so glad you're here. Yay. Thank you. Um, I'm using one of the click and plays. 
This is Halo. Halo, Halo, Halo. And I'm going to take a flat eyeshadow brush. I am going to get my paper towel. Because like I said, I am going to, I'm putting it on strong and then I'm going to blend where, um, where normally I probably would blend as I go. I just want to make sure you know where to put it. Okay. So using halo, which is a pretty bright color an off, like a white, like you would envision a halo bean. And I'm going to put it on my inside corner. So I'm almost making a V. Okay. See that? Almost making a V. I'll do this side. Now there's always room. Don't think it has to be like perfect, perfect, or like, oh, only go to here. You're there's gonna be overlapping on these colors and blending them together so it's okay if you go a little bit farther and then i am going to do it right underneath my brow bone just a little i just want that a little bit pop not a bunch pop okay so you can tell the difference. I didn't do it too bright here, but I do have it going on in here. Okay. So next I'm going to take in the, um, which one is this? In the optics, I'm taking the purple shimmery color. And I'm going to put that almost in the square right there. You know what? I lied. First, I'm going to go in and with a blending brush, the, the matte color, it's called ultraviolet. You have two that are on top. There's spectrum and then ultraviolet. The matte color I'm going to do in the crease. Ooh, I don't know if this is matte. Maybe it is. Maybe it's not. I don't know. I'm going to do it just right here a little bit. Blending and we're blending and we're blending. And we're blending and we're blending and we're blending. I'm just going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Not hard, not pushing down on my lid too much. Just where I can feel the brush. And then I'm going to keep going, keep going. Right there. Okay. So you start seeing a little bit of depth in the eye. Now I'm going to take my flat eyeshadow brush and put in Spectrum, which is that pop of purple that is a shimmer and i'm just going to place that right here on the lid and going up to my crease okay making sense give me um Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Okay, I think we got that back working. Back working, back working. Back up and running. Maybe so, maybe not. All right. So why did I get a sad face? Tina, if you're still here, babe, tell me why I'm getting a sad face. 
My rule is you can't put a sad face and leave. You have to let me know why the sad face or the angry face. Can't just do it and leave. Got to give me something. All right. So I now have the two different colors on and it's going from light to medium. And then I'm going to put dark in the crease. And I think what I'm going to end up doing, because I don't have like a real deep purple. Um, I think I'm going to use, I don't know. I don't know. I actually have this one, but. It's a shimmer, so I might be mixing. Let's see if it works. I am going to do that, which is in the click and plays, and this is Iris. Now, I don't know how many times you have told me, or I've told y'all, in your crease, you want to stick to mattes, okay? You want to stick to mattes, because that's going to pop your, your crease up. Shimmers draw attention. And so we, we want to create some depth there. So make sure normally you do that. <laughs> but of course, because it's makeup and because it's an artist, we get to sometimes make our own rules. I'm really disturbed about that mad face. Because I know I can help. So I am going to go into this iris, but I'm also going using the nude and naughty in the mauvey color to maybe try to create a little more depth there. And then I'm going to make another V on the outside. See how that's going. Okay. Maybe let's see. I might darken it even more and do a little bit. Those are usually accidental. Oh, the, um, oh, that's so bad. Okay. Thank you. I'm like, thank you for pointing that out, Linda. Um, I hope it, I'm like, I seriously take it personal. I'm like, why are you giving me an angry face? All right. Yay, back. So how are you, Robin? How are you? All right. So I'm actually putting a little bit of the black in with mixed in. I'm mixing three colors, basically. With the iris blackout and then a little bit of kind of a mauve color. And look how I'm just making a V. See? Go back over here. Okay. But see how you can see like the three different, like the separation of all the colors. Now I'm going in and I'm going to blend all of those together. So I'm cleaning out my brush and then you can inside, however you like to blend it, but lightly taking a blending brush. This is in our brush set. So if you don't have this one, get this one. It's perfect for blending because of how it's set up. It's set up like this. So when you start, it just starts moving that color. Okay. And we're doing windshield wiper movements. So I can still blend that. And I'm still have my paper towel because what ends up happening is once I blend this a little bit, I'll do this just to clean it off. And you just keep going until it starts blending. So this one still shows you how I place the colors. And normally, yes, I would blend as I go along, but it's whatever you are more comfortable with to start blending. But you do want to see the, the gradual color change. Um, and again, not have those harsh lines. Okay, so just keep blending, click, blam, 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 blam. Ooh. 
really pretty. Now, if after blending, you're like, oh, I lost the white or I lost whatever color, I can go back and put in my white here to make that white pop in a little bit more. And then that way it is a little, it's still, you can go back and correct it is basically what I'm telling you. And then I can come up and blend this up a little bit. I blend this. And there we go. So I'm going to go back and with that iris purple, because it is pretty. I'll go in with the flat eyeshadow brush and line the bottom. And I just place it right in there. So I don't have that pull. I don't, I'm not creating havoc underneath my eyes. I'm just doing it like that. Okay. Maybe a little bit more. Right, like that. Now, let's talk about fallout. So you tend to have, if you're going to have fallout, it's probably going to be with more of a shimmer shade, like something that has some shimmer to it than a matte. So if you do have that, right at this point, I did show you how to put the peach color corrector on. So I do have peach underneath my eyes. But if I was doing this from the beginning, um, I probably would have just done the eyes first and then I would come back I can clean it up and then come back with the peach. Um, what I normally would do is take a wipe. You can even wipe it or wipe, wrap it around and go like this and clean up any fallout. Another way is you can take a translucent powder, your loose powder, and I'm going to use our, this powder, take a powder brush and swipe. The eyeshadow will go off with the um, powder. So I just do boop. Just do some swipes. And then it doesn't mess up what I did underneath. I'm just going to double check. Yep. It's all gone. Voila. Voila. All right. So let me get in with um, my foundation. I'm using the silk. Just kidding. I'm using Rose 4-in-1. Put my drops in here, Rose Born One Shade Three, drops, and now I'm going in and I'm going to just start in one spot, make my passes. I don't have to go up all the way underneath the eyes because I already did that with the peach color corrector. So I just go up to kind of smooth that out. Lynn, you like the rose? I like how it smells. Um, I like that it has Bulgarian rose in it. And that's really all the foundation I need. That's all I'm going to do right now. Blow the rest of that out. And then I'm going to do some quick contouring and maybe some blush. I'm taking my cut one, which is that one right there. Doing a little contouring. Okay, I don't know where that came from, and that's going to really bother me. It's like this new dibbit. Stephanie, love who loves the rose? Give me some roses if you like the rose foundation. I am going to add a little bit of charming blush. You're mixing the rose to match. I love it. Yeah, sometimes I find that I need to add um, two a little bit if I don't tan or put some tanning tonic on. Now I'm running through this because we're going to do lashes. So I am going to put on some lashes. Um, I'm going to show you the difference. We do have kits that have all of these together. Um, or you can buy them in these little boxes as well. 
Because once you get the kit, you have the application. Are we back? <laughs> I hope we're back. Uh, okay, now I'm afraid to move because I'm like, I can't. Go on, move. Go on, move. Um, Lindy asked, is, um, yes, we we don't, it's not plumping, but it's called the blur. -er 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 -er, and um, it's called velvet veil and it blurs fine lines and wrinkles. You can use it everywhere. But I definitely use it underneath the eyes because it is going to help um, do fine lines and um, um, fine lines and wrinkles. Um, Andrea asked, does anyone have perfect skin other than babies? No, girl. That's why we airbrush. <laughs> that's why we airbrush. We've got to airbrush. Because, guys, think about this, and Andrea brings a good point, is, um, I know, I'm like, now I have it down. I know what to do. What have, I'm, like, so scared to breathe. But Andrea on YouTube says, does anyone have perfect skin other than babies? And that's the whole thing. Like, no, we don't. We always have some issues, right? But if you think about it, not touching your face while applying makeup you don't have to be a rocket scientist to understand that like that's better for your face. We don't have that constant pull on our face. So I wish I had this when I was younger and could have done it as soon as I started wearing makeup because then it's uh, I, my, I would have better skin because I don't have that constant pull. Um, help eliminate the dark spots, sun damage. Not the the bamboo polish it <coughs> sorry um it will help <coughs> it's not going to eliminate it it will not eliminate it all right let's look at these real quick where did my other one go this one is glam this one is glam this one is diva <coughs> that one is diva and I didn't open the natural one. And then this one is the natural. Now, don't let the names fool you as far as thinking, oh, that's diva. I'm not going to be a diva. The lashes are very doable. They're very, um, they're ones that you would, you would wear. Okay. So let's look at them all together. Hopefully they don't fall out. See, they're very in line with, with each other. It's not too crazy. <clears throat> the diva ones go from a shorter end to a longer end. So it's like, whoo, that. And then natural is, it's the same pretty much all the way through, maybe a little bit higher on the, um, right at the peak. And then the um, glam, these also go, do I have these doubled up? also go from shorter to longer at the end. So let's do, I think I want to do those. <clears throat> let's do Diva. Cindy said, my skin improves since using Luminesce. Don't even need to use the color correctors as much. That is awesome. 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 Um, when buying the kit, you do get the glue and the applicator. Uh, so once you have that and you may have your like, favorite lash that you're going to go to, you can, um, <clears throat> you know, you can just buy the lash itself. And then 
I'll do this one. I'm taking them off the little magnetic part. And then you're going to go in and apply the glue. Glue slash magnet properties, okay, slash eyeliner. So it has glue. It's duo adhesive. So it has the glue and it has the magnetic properties for them to stick, um, which I love. So taking my duo glue, duo adhesive, And now I'm going to tickle the lash line. Right like that. Okay. Now, because my ends of my lashes get curly, I'm going to pull that off my lash that it was on. And now I can take my lash. I'm looking for the shorter end to go on the inside. and the longer end to wing out. And then, let me see how, how I can do this where y'all can see. I'm taking, put them in the holder just like that. And I, all I have to do is like aim for that line because they're gonna stick. Yeah, that is that easy. Then I can take the, these work like tweezers And then I can just make sure that they're on. Mm, that's how easy. That's all you have to do. <laughs> that's it. So now go to the other side. And again, right at the lash line, just like you're putting on eyeliner. Put myself in the eyeball, pulling it off my lashes that like to grab it. Taking my applicator, putting it on my lash like that. And I just apply it like that. The tackiness of what, babe? What do you do about the tackiness? The tackiness of the glue? Are you feeling tackiness in the foundation? Got a little bit on my lid. Right there. Oh, oh, oh. I was like, whoa. Okay. And there you go. That's all. The staying power is unreal. It will last. They last all day long. And I do find, like, even if you wanted to carry this with you, um, that it's easier, like, from regular lashes versus these, it's easier to touch up with this uh, than regular glue. So I love them. But they will stay on all day long. They're amazing. If you haven't tried lashes, I would go straight for the magnetic ones uh, because they are just easier to put on. So it is amazing. Amazing. Oh, Linda, don't do it. Don't do it. Research it a little bit more. Um, I find that people that do the lashes, um, like the lash extensions are, um, your, it, it pulls your, like you, your lashes are going to be so short if you stop doing it. Just do pink lashes. Um, so Andrea, you only wear them one day. Um, that's all you need is, you know, wear them on day one day, but they just come off. Like you just pull them and then you put them back in your box. Where, where are my boxes? Put them back in the box. Um, and store them there because there is that magnetic strip there that they adhere to. So it, it forms them the way they're supposed to form for um, for, you know, for you to keep them. So it goes on a little bit better as well. So 
Robin said, you made it look so, it is that easy, guys. It is, I promise. It is, it is. All right, guys, we went a little long today. I'm gonna go finish up my lips and then I will be done for today. So I will see you guys all tomorrow. I hope you have a great Tuesday and we'll talk soon. Bye for now.